First of all, thank you so much for your time to do this interview. And I'm really sorry I couldn't be there in, in person. I would have liked to see your show at least. Um, so, you know, you just released your album today and you're playing at NotFest already. Are you going to play some new songs today? No. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna play, yeah, we're gonna play quite a few. I think we're playing. I don't know. We like the new album so much. We're playing like five or six new songs, I think. So, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, we've had this really long running campaign. You know, it's been, um, it was, you know, I think the first single came out nine or 10 months ago, Deceiver, Deceiver. You know, we have all these songs now House of Mirrors, Handshake with Hell, Sunset Over the Empire, and now, um, uh, in the eye of the storm, you know, and they've all really connected with the fans very well. You know, people are, really know these songs so it's it's kind of different you know the album is out today but the songs uh, like half of the album is very well sort of established already anyway so it's it's pretty cool yeah and that was going to be one of my questions because i remember when you released uh deceiver deceiver you didn't have any info about like a new album coming up and you sort of left fans hanging a little bit and i thought this was a really interesting approach in general how you release quite many singles for uh, oh yeah cycle. um was that intentional for because of the pandemic maybe or was there any sort of other reasoning so, i mean you know i'd like to you know it's it's where i was a bit skeptical when this plan came together because you know it's not what i'm used to you know i'm very rooted in the uh, you know re releasing two singles and the album is out and boom we're on tour and that's it basically okay. um this was a different approach and it wasn't my idea, you know, but it worked out very well. So I'd love to say it's my idea, but it's not. <laughs> it came from the record label and the management and, you know, it's just, they really wanted to try this approach. I think partially because of the pandemic, maybe, you know, we couldn't really go on tour. We didn't know when we could go on tour, but we didn't want to sit on the album even longer than we already had. So we thought let's put out songs and, and, you know, connect with the fans again and let them know that we're still here and, Hopefully they're still there for us, and you know, yeah. But it it all worked out really nicely. So now I'm very positive about the the whole approach that we had. <laughs> yeah. Well, after the fact. <laughs> that exactly. <was> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since you released Deceiver, Deceiver, like quite a long time ago already. Um, when did you guys actually start on the album? Did you already start working on it before the famous March 2020, or? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I was already writing, you know, some riffs and stuff like that and uh, bits and pieces of music. Um, I mean, already in 2018, 2019. But so I, I would say seriously, we started working on the album in January 2020. You know, we, we were already we were on the road until December 20, 2019. And then we had this time off. Um set aside to like you know we we'd already actually said that 2020 is going to be like a year off for arch enemy it turned out to be a year off for the whole world but um yeah so 2020 i would say in january uh, 2020 we started working more seriously on the demos and you know and then sweden was different with the restrictions and stuff like that and uh, and me and danny were both living in sweden so we could like meet up and work on the music and create these songs together the instrumental versions and then i would email them you know then we'd send them over to uh elisa in canada and she'd put some ideas on some of them and you know it was just a good actually worked out it got a bit more complicated once we really wanted to record the album and not you know past the demo phase when we want to get into the actual studios and the way we work is we don't really do a lot of stuff remotely we try to get everybody into the actual studio and sort of you know just vibe off each other and critique each other's performances a bit more, you know. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, when you're, you know, with the time differences and uh, doing it on file sharing online and stuff like It's not as exciting, maybe. But, you know, we, we actually managed to get it done the way we wanted to do it. Yeah, you mentioned in a couple of interviews that you really um, always have a lot of fun working together, writing on songs and the demos. And I was wondering, do you feel like having fun and having these dynamics with the band, does that have an, any kind of an effect on the music itself? Of course. I mean, you know, I mean, I write most of the music I always have done. And that's, you know, 
I'm the main composer of music, but then Daniel is a huge part of the band as well, our drummer. He's also responsible for our recordings. You know, he's really into the recording part of it, you know, so he tracks a lot of the albums as well as the demos. Um, and he also contributes with musical ideas and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, that's a great collaboration there. And then Elisa's involved as well. About half of the album she writes lyrics for, and then I do the rest. So, you know, and, and then, you know, when and the performances from Jeff and Charlie, I mean, they are, they are their own, you know. I mean, I don't really tell people what to play, you know. I'm not really that kind of band leader, you know, because I, I've got these guys in the band because I think they're amazing musicians and, you know, their performances are... And their creativity and talent is something that I I really want, you know. So and I want them to bring that. So and they do. So it, it's a great in that way. It's a very positive atmosphere. Well, cons well, related to the album, I thought there were some really refreshing and also maybe even surprising moments, at least to me. Do you feel mm -hmm. like for this record specifically, you were able to try maybe new things, or, or even with your guitar, for instance? Um. Yeah. I mean, there's always you know. I mean, basically, you know, I'm still learning a lot. I've been doing it for a very long time, but I'm still like, it's still like a journey, you know, I'm still excited to, um, to try new stuff. And, you know, there's always something that we haven't done, you know, like uh, we've never started a song like this, or we've never had that kind of tempo or we've never done this. You know, there's always, I always make a little note, you know, it's like, oh, that would be cool for Arch Enemy maybe. Then we try it, you know, and we have this rule when, in the writing phase where we never say no to any ideas how dumb they m might feel or sound, you know because it's easy, it's for more fun we say yes to every idea and then of course later on we sort of uh, <laughs> we get a bit more critical as we approach you know finalizing everything but it's fun to just say yes to every idea and then and and actually complete it you know like work on it until it's done and then then you can sort of step back and think you know okay maybe this is too far out for our enemy or this isn't really what you know doesn't really sound that great or whatever or it could be amazing you know and you end up with a little bit of new ideas you know that, uh, and you know I'm, I'm i still find there's a lot of stuff that i'd like to do in the future as well you know so I'm, i don't feel like i'm done really i guess it's just a it's a journey <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah fun, well, you know creative is it's like one that's like the most fun you can have you know that i know of with your clothes on or some blood, I guess, you know, it's just, um, you know, being creative in any field, I guess, you know, if it's art, any kind of art, I guess it's, it's, it's very fulfilling, you know? Yeah, one of the things that I, for instance, was surprised about is the ending of, of Eye of the Storm. It sort of felt like I had a feeling that there would be coming more and then it ends kind of maybe abruptly, but in a good way, you know? So what was oh, yeah. the idea behind the whole song? Is there anything special about that song for you guys that you can mention? uh well i mean i heard i just wanted to have this kind of drum groove in a song you know and it's got a kind of an 80s anthemic 80s metal feel maybe to it but maybe a little bit heavier but you know uh you know it's just a i really like that song a lot it's a little bit different for us and you know actually when i'm writing songs now or when i come up with the initial idea for a song i should say it's more like a I'm thinking about the live show as well nowadays. I'm thinking yeah. about what kind of song don't we have, you know, because it's always fun to add something to the show that doesn't sound like the other, another five songs that we already have, you know, it's always fun to bring in like a new tempo or new mood into this show, you know, because I think that really adds dynamic to our concerts. And um, yeah, well, we'll see. We've played it twice live. You know, and it worked very well. So it was, it's just yeah. super fun. It feels a bit slow, you know, live, but, you know, I can see people really getting into it. So Yeah, it has a nice sort of groove that I can see people, like, you know, jamming. Yeah. In the audience. I think it feels slow because a lot of our stuff is so high, you know, adrenaline, adrenalized, and just, like, crazy. And then you go, like, duh, 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 duh. so it feels... It feels a bit weird to go down to that tempo now, but I think it's something that... I mean, when we did Eagle Flies Alone, when that was new... That felt super slow to us as well you know we're just a kind of a speedy type of band you know but uh naturally but i really do like to do more mid-tempo stuff it's fun to have that here and there yeah you mentioned actually this live feeling that you sort of 
um, write the songs with the live shows in mind. And I think that's also really clear in the music. You sometimes have these sections where Alyssa just goes like, hey, hey, you know, for the audience. Um, so true. Is that like intentionally written like, oh, this would be a really cool part live? I think so. I mean, you know, we play so many shows live, you know, um, we will do, you know, between 200 and 300 concerts on each album cycle, you know, so it's a lot of concerts and it just gets sort of, it becomes a part of you, you know, <laughs> I think the stage is also, and I believe that the stage is really where a band proves its true worth, you know, um, there's so many bands that can sound great on the album in the studio, you know, there's a lot you can do now to fake it or whatever, you know, to sound great. But then on the stage, it's like, that's like the last place. It's like the place of truth in a way, you know. <laughs> uh, of course, we, yeah, we think about the live show and we think about the fans. But first and foremost, I think we think about in the initial writing phase, we think about ourselves, you know, and we being a bit selfish, you know. That's our time to be a bit selfish and express ourselves, I guess. One of the songs that I personally really liked um, was One Last Time, um, because it, it was also sort of a surprising song to me. Like in the guitars, it sounded kind of positive for once, like not, not super yeah. melancholic. Was that yeah. sort of intentional to place it towards the end of the record? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just, yeah, I mean, the, I, I, you know, that's the thing, you know, with the, the flow of an album. I don't know how many people really listen to a whole album nowadays. People see it so fragmented now. People just listen to tracks and, you know, add stuff to playlists and, you know, stuff like that. So, but, you know, we still, I'm still very much rooted in the album flow, you know, even side A, side B, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ancient, but, um, you know, but then, you know, from, you know, I, I, we do think about the track order. I think that's important. It's like a set list for a live show or something like, you know, you want it to have the, the, the high points and the, and the low, you know, the peaks and valleys and the lights and light and shade, you know, and then um, that song, you know, of course, it comes there at a point where you've had a lot of uh, dark stuff, I guess. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. And that, that song, the lyrics are, I mean, the, it's kind of an uplifting song, I guess, you know, where it's about yeah. <laughs> overcoming, you know, people looking down on you, people don't believe in you, but, you know, I, I really believe that everybody has it in them to uh, to achieve their goals, you know, but it's about your mindset and the mental attitude that you have so i think yeah i like to write songs about that yeah it makes sense and it works well with the like the intense last track of the album as well it's uh, i read about climate change so it totally makes sense um, oh yeah that, that's elisa's lyric yeah yeah that's a bit, <laughs> it, it ends on a gloomy note but you know, <laughs> it sounds like a movie or something at the end and you think oh, there's a part two to this <laughs> Anyway, you're also heading on a European tour in fall with Behemoth. So is there anything you can tell fans about that tour? Like, are you going to focus on this new album, song-wise? I mean, it's going to be like a balance, I think. You know, I mean, we're very fortunate in a way, you know, as a group, because, you know, we we have, uh, we've been going for 25 plus years, but our newer music is our most popular music, actually. So, you know, usually after this, after, on your 11th album, it's like the classics are on the early stuff and then the fans just kind of tolerate the new stuff. <laughs> you know? uh, but with us, it seems to be the opposite. You know, like the new songs are the ones that are getting the most airplay, the most YouTube views, you know. You know, I mean, it's just nuts, you know, how many people listen to our stuff now nowadays. But... Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a balanced set list, though. You know, we 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 play some of the old stuff, some of the new stuff. It's going to be a good mix, and I'm excited about the tour. You know, Arch Enemy, Behemoth, Carcass, and on to others. I think it's a killer package, and we're coming to Finland as well. Yeah, it's exactly. one of the, one of the last shows on the tour. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. Anyway, the 15 minutes are up, so I'm going to let you go and enjoy the rest of the. Like 15 minutes of fame are up. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any last thoughts you want to share with with your fans? Um, I don't know, just like to, you know, thank everyone for the support of this whole campaign. You know, it's been a, a different one, you know, releasing all these singles and everything over a long period of time. And, uh, you know, thanking everybody, I guess, for being patient. And, you know, the album is out today. So uh, it's August 12th and uh, super excited. Go and check out Deceivers and looking forward to playing in Finland again.